So before we jump in, why don't you um, in, introduce yourself, who you are, and the art you create? Sure. Uh, my name is Taj Sharif. I am a creative writer and screenwriter, uh, currently based on the East Coast in uh, New Jersey. Um, I create a lot of different kinds of things, but uh, I've been working a lot in the scripted content for uh, some streaming platforms, um, animation, and uh, doing some writing and producing for a few media outlets. That's awesome. So basically, you're not busy at all. You're super bored and just sitting at home doing nothing. Just sit, just sitting at yeah. home, like the right, or or juggling like six, six or seven projects yeah. at a time. Yeah. <laughs> one or the other. It's one, yeah. of, one or the other. Those <laughs> heavy vacillating between both. So, <laughs> so um, you know, I what I want to first ask you is, what role do you think creatives play, and what responsibility do we have in the midst? of crises like the pandemic and the protest atmosphere of 2020? Mm. Um, that's a good question. I think as far as creatives go with the sort of like tense political climates and just like the environments that we live in, the work that we create sort of is kind of gives language to things. Like it is kind of like the, the tools by which our, we use ourselves and I think other people kind of use as their own touchstones for like interpretations of emotions and events. Um, so like, I think scripts and film documentary, like songs, like those, especially protest songs, like you look at, there is something about um, striking a chord with people. Like when some, the way you are able to sort of arrange your own interpretation of this strikes a chord with other people. And I think it just gives shape to a thing that like otherwise is this nebulous weight that just kind of hangs over you and you don't know what to do with it. And I think, um, I mean, I guess this is sort of a weird comparison, but it feels like um, for me, like one of my great, one of my creative inspirations and like it's weirdly safe spaces is horror movies and like horror like content because and people are like oh no it scares me because like monsters and that kind of thing and I'm like well no for me it is so much more easy to deal with the physical like manifestation of a negative thing so like you're afraid of like the Freddy Kruegers and like the, the zombies and that kind of thing but it's like it has a body and when it like has a body it is something that can be escaped or trapped or defeated as opposed to like something systemic, like when you have something like racism or like you have something that is like, or any kind of systemic like oppression, it is just this thing that exists as opposed to where art comes in. And I think it gives it some kind of shape so that people can at least put their hands on it and and start to name it and start to deal with it with, with what and however that means, whatever that means for them. Um, where that means like now I can go and create my own art to like I have a jumping off point to like help myself work through this or like I'm now galvanized to whatever action by this song or piece of work or like this novel or what have you and I think it kind of is a similar principle. That's uh yeah I, I haven't heard that response yet and so that one's new I like that I like that <laughs> a lot and it makes it makes like now now that you've said it it makes a lot of sense it just kind of makes something a little bit more tangible which sometimes makes it a little less threatening because mm -hmm. you, you can't escape it or you can't at least fight against it. Um, yeah. So my favorite lines in your piece, I, like, honestly, I highlighted everything. I felt, <laughs> I felt like I was like reading some book and I was like, yes, and then <laughs> that. how are you hearing my soul? Uh. It was really hard for me to like pick pieces, but I, yeah. I wanted to get a little bit more um, background depth and in, in terms of your feelings. Um, mm -hmm. One of my favorite lines of your piece is a life, a work, an idea exists and must be tended to. Gently in a downpour of violence to sit in the violence and, con and consider a world that grows without the infection of anti-blackness is my salvation. And after a day and a night feels wrong. I am a, I am a creator of fiction and to express a world influenced by our collective pain can feel exploitative. It feels like raising a child and closing, clothing them in suffering. And it was that last line that really got me. It feels hmm. 
like raising a child and clothing them in suffering. Can you mm -hmm. talk a little bit more about what you meant? In that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think when I was writing this, it was, um, I was, <laughs> I, I was heavily like, in escapism mode as much as I could possibly be, but like none of that really existed because I think like a lot of people, I was sort of caught in this cycle of like, I don't want to hear anything else bad happening, but I can't break away from the news because again, I'm on high alert. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the line itself, I think I'm just, just, just expressing a particular, it's not quite, it's not quite a paralysis. It's like almost like a half paralysis that you were like, trying to like break out of mm -hmm. like sort of being caught in like I, the best way I can like physically describe it is like being in like a rubber cement or something so like you were like semi immobilized um and I think the comparison you know again like and I think I preface in the piece too that like I know nothing of like rearing rearing a child because I don't have any children and my body doesn't create children so I don't know what that is that's just my best approximation of it but it is trying to create something that is completely free of the violence that you are constantly digesting in the world that you live in is like almost aspirational. And, but sitting down to do that, to kind of remove the ugly part of it is, it feels like a disservice. It feels like a disservice to the truth of the matter. And like, it feels like a disservice to the work. And, and again, is a form of avoidance, like often enough, like creating fictional circumstances is fine, but like removing the ugly part of it for the sake of like, because it's just too hard to look at. For one, I've, I've noticed makes the, it just, it weakens the work itself. It weakens the point of it. Um, and, and all of those feelings are still there and like they need somewhere to go. Um, and the other thing is that like the other swing of that is I think expressing a frustration that I have been feeling about a lot of content that has been very topical, like very on the nose of like dealing, you know, expressing like just discussing police brutality and discussing like state sponsored violence and discussing like protests and like these black freedom movements that are happening right now and how those things have almost become commodified and so topical that like people are, you know, and, and obviously at the time being in LA and like seeing a lot of stuff coming out, like you, the conversations around what spurs it on aren't like, we need to tell the story. It's kind of like, it's, it feels like it's hot, it's buzzy. Like it becomes this thing that is like popular and that felt so, parasitic like it felt just really like something about it was just like particularly viral because it like is now profiteering from suffering mm -hmm. in a way that I don't know like people it just it just gave people this convenient blindness to it where they're like oh no we're creating good work I'm like but I can you can tell the energy of it is just like you this is because it's popular not because you know what I mean like and to, and to say that works that are like showing black violence or, or violence that is being perpetrated on black people by you know whatever oppressive force as being like popular like or <laughs> just that even just even having to like verbalize it that way there was just there's just it just feels like there's certain things that like there's a demon in this like if we <laughs> like if we don't if you are not careful with like the kinds of things you do, it just feels like there is something underneath that that just comes to life and just runs rampant. And that's that's a lot of, I think, where where that line was coming or those lines were coming from, just kind of like, again, raising a child and like either putting them in this bubble where they don't have a full concept of like the truth of the matter or or just maybe possibly trying to force yourself to talk about these things in a way that makes them insincere. And now you are a part of this group of people who's profiteering from like the actual loss of people's lives and violence perpetrated. And like, 
just just trauma and i'm like and i didn't want to be that but i didn't know what to be so <laughs> and so that, that's where a lot of the uh the line that piece of it comes from for me i i want to ask you a question then because yeah. uh I, I i do know that this is even something I personally struggle with is mm -hmm. because I have echoes and because I am a creative, oftentimes those things intersect because mm -hmm. I'm always in the echoes world of making mm -hmm. sure I'm creating content that, you know, is helpful or useful or informative about social justice, human mm -hmm. rights, rights, that sort of thing. And so I, I come from, you know, wanting to maintain that that content, but then I also am a creative and I am a storyteller. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not always me telling stories that are black in nature. It's mm -hmm. not you know, the story about the black woman. It's just a story about a woman who's black or mm -hmm. just a story about a woman. And I don't even see, you know, what color she is in this particular story. Mm -hmm. So constantly, I guess, holding those two parts of me. Um, what is it that you do to balance those two parts? To, to keep from being like you're, you're, you know, utilizing that suffering because you also said it's it's a kind of a, a form of catharsis for you. That's what you're doing. You're yeah. working out whatever trauma, whatever drama, whatever is going on with you mm -hmm. through your art. How is it that you are able to balance, you know, your catharsis, your art without being like, exploitative mm -hmm. um or do you feel like it's something that you constantly tip yeah it's i think that's that's one of those things that lives in it lives in a really vague gray area um and it's it's again one of those things that is more like em, <laughs> empathically felt as opposed to being something you can nail down for sure mm -hmm. it's you do, you never know somebody else's intent um, necessarily, but there is something that you feel from it. And I know for me, I think, and again, and it's, and so that even factors into like just as artists, like the thing that you create is for like an expressive purpose. But then also, we live in a world where we, you know, we live in a system of capitalism. So like we have to feed ourselves. So like you do end up having to create in a way that feeds you. And like let you also buy bread and milk and you know and pay your rent and keep your lights on. Otherwise, right. you won't be able to do this thing. Um, so I think it's less less than. And and to be clear, like I don't mean to like police anybody else's work yeah. or, or their creation because I'm like I don't know the intent. Yeah. I know, but I, I do know for me it is a matter of is what I'm saying sincere? Is what I'm saying specific to what I'm feeling when I'm creating um, and also not sort of co-opting somebody else's experience for the sake of and so by that I guess I would mean like you know like some people I like I'm from a, I'm from an area that is like hood adjacent right so like but you know both my parents were in the house like my grandmother my great-grandmother lived there had brother and sister like everything was cool like and so like I am not a suburban person but I also don't know I, I also don't know anything about like yeah you know being on the corner like trying to step like like that's not my life and so for me to then try and present myself as like a first-hand expert of those things which I think sometimes happens in works um that can feel exploitative like because it, it like especially if I if I can see that there is like a wave of that so like if there are a wave of like BLM inspired works that are coming out that are dealing with police violence and it's just like I've I've had negative interactions with like law enforcement but not to those extents yeah um, which is not to say I can't write about them but what I would it would but it would mean that I would need to write from a different perspective I feel. Mm -hmm. Because I do, the last thing I would want to do is minimize somebody else's experience or like co opt somebody else's experience or present those experiences as my own as opposed to like the proper proximity that I've actually had to it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, again, for me, it's really just balancing 
balancing intention and like internally checking in like internally checking in with like is this truly what you want to say about this like what do you want to say about this what are you feeling about this thing if you are if you are writing about this thing um if you're not right if, if you haven't had these experiences or don't know anything about it why are you writing it like you know what i mean like why are you writing this as opposed to the thing that you actually do know about so this has been amazing um yeah. can you, you tell people where they can find you and your work uh sure um i am on the internet <laughs> um i don't have like a website up or anything but you can find my stuff like i have a few things on like youtube i'm trying to upload some stuff to vimeo but i am working again with uh big footers llc on a couple of pieces of content so like definitely check them out i'm working with slay tv in new york on some upcoming content also and also developing some content with Afropunk. So definitely look out for those things uh, on social media. I'm at Taj Sharif on Twitter and uh, Taj Mahalik 21 on Instagram. And uh, I'm also on LinkedIn, which is very grown up of me. So <laughs> I'm trying to work my way out in that LinkedIn world too. Like it's just... I'll get, get in on LinkedIn while, while the getting's good. It's, it's a good <laughs> place to be. It's like one of, it's my favorite platform, especially for work. Cause it's just work. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a slate. something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for sharing your gifts and your talents with us and your thoughts. I really appreciate it. No, no problem. I really appreciate you letting me take part. I feel like honored that you wanted to even talk to me about it and like to have my work featured in any way. So I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you.